Hello and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee and I am your host for this program. You can catch all of our Think Tech Hawaii shows on thinktechhawaii.com as well as on Think Tech Hawaii's Facebook and YouTube channel. Today I am very, very excited and humbled to introduce our guest. TJ Joseph, Chief Executive Officer of Honolulu Habitat for Humanity. TJ, kind of stumbled on there a little bit, but welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much, Think Tech, and thank you, Kathleen, for inviting me. Absolutely. So tell our viewers about yourself, a little bit of background. So like you mentioned, I am the new CEO, Chief Executive Officer of Honolulu Habitat for Humanity, effective September 1st. Um, this has been a long journey for me. Uh, not only am I the first Native Hawaiian female chief executive officer here at Honolulu Habitat, but I'm also a Habitat homeowner. So it is not only an honor, but I'm super excited to, to have this role in this title, to lead our organization to a new future. Um, back in 2006, my husband and I had the opportunity with a Department of Hawaiian Homelands um, lease to be able to build a brand new home. Um, he and I had one child at the time and we worked really hard. In fact, in true local girl standards, we ended up um, deciding at that time, are we gonna have a big wedding? Or are we gonna elope and save our funds for a down payment? So we decided to elope, it was the best wedding ever with only six people, which was our parents and our grandparents. Um, saved all this money at the end of 2006 um, for that down payment. And then I discovered that I had stage four ovarian cancer, that I was working in the nonprofit sector with Keiki Aina as a parent participation preschool teacher. And unfortunately, um, due to that, all of that down payment went for my treatments um, and able for me to heal at 25, having stage four ovarian cancer um, was life threatening. But with the support of my family and the love of God and everybody else who was around, I was able to beat that after six months of, of treatments. And um, at that point in time, when it was time to qualify for those homes in that subdivision, um, we just couldn't make it. Uh, they, the bank had suggested to my husband, let's use your overtime as income. And I was like, no ways, that's not gonna work because we would foreclose in, in no time, especially since he was the breadwinner at that time. So. Um, what we did is we stumbled upon this great organization called Honolulu Habitat for Humanity. And they said, you know, if you are willing to do sweat equity and build alongside us, obviously you guys have an income that will be able to support an affordable mortgage that we would help you to um, build that home. Is this something that you're willing to do? And if you had a need and for my husband and I at that time with the one child and we were blessed after all of those treatments and being cancer free to have three more. So as parents of four children, we decided to go all in and we were excited about that, that opportunity because just like our grandparents built the homes that our parents were born and raised in, we had the opportunity to build our home. So we came to Honolulu Habitat and qualified. Um, it was a long wait while that subdivision was being set up. And we were also fortunate that in that subdivision, there was a total of six habitat families that we built along side by side with one another. So our six families took a year and a half from 2013 to 2014 to build our homes side by side. So in December of 2014, we received the keys to our home and it was such a rewarding experience. A lot of people don't realize how much work it takes to build a home, especially when there's thousands of volunteers that come out every Saturday. Um, one of the things that we say at Honolulu Habitat is that each home is not a hand out, but a hand up that we are all um, homeowners. I pay a mortgage just like anyone else, but the gratifying experience of building that home gives you another level of appreciation. So um, in February of 2015, Jim Murphy came and said, so TJ, now that we built your home, would you want to be a part of our team? And I said, absolutely. Uh, so I joined in 2015. I worked as a, a coordinator for the repair program. And in those seven years, I just decided to, to learn as much as I can in any opportunity that I had. So I was the brush of kindness coordinator. I ended up being the office manager, B 
being the operations manager. I oversaw the restore. I oversaw um, our construction department. Um, I held titles as a deputy director and then of chief of staff. So when Jim Murphy said that he was resigning at the end of June, I was so excited to at least have this opportunity. And, you know, I think the one most powerful thing that I have, not only the passion for this mission, because I am a product and a beneficiary of it, but the two words I understand is huge. I understand when it comes to our homeowners and what it's like to be putting in an application. I understand as a staff member what it takes on this end of the stick. There's all these steps that we're taking to help our, our homeowners and our volunteers and everyone who is involved in this organization to be able to fill of themselves and be filled with the things that we need to do and seeing this mission come to fruition. So just extremely honored and humbled by this opportunity. I think that is amazing. For people who are not familiar with Honolulu Habitat, Tell us about what the organization is, what it does, and how does the application process work? Sure. So um, Honolulu Habitat actually started in 1988. Um, currently, we have three programs. Our first program is a home build program. So that's the opportunity to either build or rebuild um, our homes. There are three tenets to all of our programs. Um, first being having a need. So that need could be overcrowding in a home situation. It could be that that home is falling apart. It could be that they need, they're in dire need of repair. The second is um, ability to repay. So with our home build program, there is a mortgage loan that's attached to that. Um, it's either going to be a construction loan funded by a third party construction um, mortgagee, which we help the homeowner to attain, or it's a loan that's provided by us. Um, our AMI is we build for those who are lower income. That's 80% of the AMI and below. All of the information can be found on our website. Um, but we make sure that that mortgage payment is no more than 30% of that household's monthly income. And that's under HUD guidelines. Um, and lastly is the willingness to partner. Partnership for us is being on it when it comes to submitting that applications. Also the willingness to do sweat equity. Sweat equity is the hours that the homeowners um, do one, 50 hours before we build on their home so that they can give to someone else, 200 hours while we're building that home. So every Saturday, our homeowners are out on their job site learning construction skills with thousands of volunteers, building their home side by side. And then there's 25 hours that they get after. In true local style, it's customary sometimes to to have a difficulty accepting help. So it's crucial that we have that first 50 to give because in that spirit of aloha, that alohe alo to give and to receive, it's that continual giving of your time, talent and treasure and receiving at the same time. And that goes the same for all of our volunteers. When they're coming out, some of them have never even swung a hammer, but they get to come out and work alongside our staff to build for our family who really is just about giving us leverage to stand on our own two feet. It's allowing us the opportunity to have self-reliance from the support that the community has. Um, so like I mentioned, our home build um, program to build a rebuild, we have a critical home repair program. So on the other end of the spectrum, if it's repairs that you need for some families, it's access. Maybe it's ramps and rails. Maybe it's making um, accessibility a resource so that the kupuna can get into the doorway. That's another thing that we can um, assist with. And our applications, um, windows of opportunity are always on our website at any time. And you can always call anyone in our staff for more information. But that's really what it's about. It's about building that habitat. So um, habitat as in home to make sure that that is um, decent and affordable and quality and secure so that you can either grow or even continue to grow here in Hawaii. I understand that the organization came up with a five-year strategic plan earlier in the year. Yes. And you also recently came in this year. How yes. do those two align for you anyway? Or what is your vision for um, making sure the five-year strategic plan comes into fruition, as well as implementing what you have 
as um, as a goal or as a mission for the organization? Yes, so we are pleased and we were pleased to announce our five-year strategic plan in January of this calendar year. What was amazing about this five-year strategic plan is it was created with majority of the staff that is still here, the board members and community stakeholders. So this plan is really the same as the blueprint to a home. So when we are building our home, there is this wonderful shot that I have of me and my husband and we're standing there on our property, holding our blueprint to the home that was gonna be built right behind me. So if you can just be with me in that moment, you're standing on a parcel, you're holding a blueprint and you are setting the intention that all of the ideas that the beautiful minds of the architects and engineers and this organization who put this blueprint together, is now gonna be executed and it's gonna be what I call my home. So with that same intent, I see this five-year plan as that blueprint for what I need to build over the next five years. So I'm so grateful that we had a staff and a board and a CEO who was here for that first seven years to leave this plan for me to execute. This plan, um, hopes that we will be tripling the number of people we serve. We want to build 40 homes in this next five years. We want to build 25 critical um, repair programs. I want to get 10 parcels of land. There's so many beautiful things in this plan, but I know this plan can't be done alone. The same way that it took hundreds of volunteers and this organization to build my house, it's going to take this community of Hawaii to help me build this organization to where it needs to be in the next five years. I always tell um, people, and when they ask, TJ, what is the most exciting thing? And I'm like, the most exciting thing is I want to do things never done before. I want to take this plan and see it to fruition. There is no gift that's too big. There's no gift that's too small. But every single gift given to this organization is an honor for us to steward correctly. I want to... Our work is not going to be done until we can drive through our communities and no longer see families living in substandard housing. That is not something I can do alone. That is not something Honolulu Habitat can do alone. But if we can work together and if this dream that we have and that we are going to work effortlessly and with all of the greatest intentions possible to make it come to fruition and with wonderful people in our community to, to work alongside us, it's something that can happen. And I want to be that person who's going to take our organization to that next level to be able to help even more and for it to be for and about the people here in Hawaii. I absolutely love that, TJ. I want to bring it back to you real quick. So as an individual who is the first Native Hawaiian woman to hold this position, what is the significance of, of that to you? I think the biggest significance is for those of us born and raised here, whether you're Native Hawaiian or you've been born and raised here on this island, you understand that it's the island way of life, that we care for one another, that it's a spirit of community. Just like I mentioned earlier, it's that aloha, it's that giving and receiving, it's that kuleana, this sense of responsibility that is also a burden that you hold because you're responsible for the people who you work and live with. So with that being said, this is more than just a career. It's a calling that I am pulled to work every day so that I can help other families um, here. The price to live in paradise has been growing immensely to about a million dollars, which means a lot of our homeowners are leaving this island to find refuge somewhere else, where with this opportunity, I can create affordable home ownership so that people can stay and live here in Hawaii like they were meant to. And with, as also as a Native Hawaiian woman, I bring who I am, not only in my leadership, but the culture that we have here. You can go to other um, habitats around international, but I don't think you will ever feel what it's like when we ground bless before we do a build and our dedications and how we add that culture and understanding because we know that when we are building for our family, 
it's not only the family, it's the land and what it means. Because as a Native Hawaiian woman, we do not own the land, we steward that land. And if we steward it well, the land will take care of us. So all of this beautiful cultural aspects that I get to sprinkle into this organization that becomes organic, living and breathing and a part of who we are is another stamp that I get to leave as my legacy working for Habitat for Humanity. I, I got chicken skin when you talked about it being a calling. So I, but for, for the viewers out there, we've had a couple of technical difficulties and TJ has been um, gracious and absolutely dealing with humility and just, I, I'm so humbled. So thank you again. Um, as someone who is coming in, and, and even though you are familiar with almost the ins and outs of the organization, mm -hmm. you are, um, since you are new to the position, what are some challenges that you have encountered so far? And how have you um, dealt with it? I think for me, the biggest challenge is, is on a personal level, and I think it's a career level. There is such a need to wanna be perfect coming out of the box. And I always have such a high expectation for myself, but I have to understand that it's, you have to learn and grow, that nothing is gonna be perfect. And that, you know, the faster I fail forward and fail in the mean, if I learn, I, impl I implement, I fail, I evaluate, I learn and implement again, the faster I can spiral so that we can do better and be more effective. Um, some of the challenges, like anything in construction, we have faced the biggest challenges I would have to say was last year with the cost of materials increasing, with the delays in permitting, um, also with coming out of COVID and not being able to have as many volunteers as we needed. Um, luckily, with the work that we did as a staff last fiscal year, just within our construction, prior to this, we've been like a two hit wonder, I would call it. We were able to build two homes at a time just within the last year, we were able to complete four homes. So I think that, you know, we have starting to get that efficiency. So it's exciting. It's super exciting. I want to continue that growth and that momentum with the mindset of, I want to be able to get around this first year as CEO, this first track with not only gratitude, but with the ability to look forward facing and be able to make sure that all of the I's are dot all of the T's are crossed so that when this next year comes, when we're into year two, three, four, and five, that momentum will build, that I'm hoping that that growth will look like that in which how we're going to be able to, um, to go ahead and give the impact that this community deserves and needs. It's new for me. It's new for others. So setting a good foundation or resetting foundation from what is left is what's important in this first year. And I want to be able to take my time in doing that. But that doesn't mean I don't want to hold back anyone who wants to join. This mission, this vision, this strap plan is large enough for all of our dreams to fit under this one roof. And I want to hold enough space for everyone who wants to be a part of it. Let me pick up from that. So since our show is called Connecting Hawaii Business, how can businesses in Hawaii and nonprofit organizations such as Honolulu Habitat for Humanity collaborate or work together? Yes, there are so many ways that businesses can get involved. Um, one of the things is besides my staff, we're tiny and mighty. Um, we do have multiple committees, whether it's uh, our construction committee or our homeowner services selection committee or our resource development committee. Those are all committees that you can set if you have time and talent that you want to give to us. Um, please go to our website and join a committee. If you want to come out and, and volunteer, maybe it's a staff build day and you want to support by bringing your staff out to build, please do. Um, as a nonprofit, you know, there are so many grants that's available to us, but a lot of those grants will always be restricted. I can get grant funds to build a home for the materials. I can gra get grant funds for different positions, but one of the hardest things is just getting unrestricted funds. So any donation of any sort, whether you may not be in the affordable housing sector, but if you believe in what a home can do, and really that's what it is, you're not just helping to build a house. You, the moment a family gets the keys, 
they realize if I can build a home, I can build a future. And for those families, that future might mean them being able to live in that home into their um they to they pass and leave a legacy to their family. For me, it's having a son go to the Coast Guard and having children who box and get to travel. For me to start a career and to build upon that, it's endless. You're building lives. And when you have a home with an affordable mortgage that you know you can pay every month, it gives such opening to the community. When you look at the families we built for and AMI, that low income, who are those people? That could be your neighbor. It could be your, your child's teacher. It could be someone who works for uh, the police department or the firefighters. These are people in the community who need your help. So any little or any much that you want to give from any community in any sector, you are feeding into a family that feeds into a community. Strong families build strong communities. Strong communities build a strong Hawaii. So you have a part to play in investing in the future. Thank you so much for reminding us that we are all connected. What are some lessons that you have learned so far, um, whether being uh, the chief executive officer or being in Honolulu Habitat for the amount of time that you have, that you would like to share with our viewers out there? I think the biggest lesson is, you know, sometimes, well, especially for me, and when you're growing up, you think that your career path is just going to be the seamless road from A to Z. Um, you know, my path wasn't that case. You know, I um, graduated from high school at Kamehameha, went to Oregon State University for a year and a half, came home, had a baby, was a teacher in the nonprofit sector for eight years, built a home, worked for this organization, and now have a career. So I am so proud of the path that I had. It's not the path that everyone takes, but at 40 years old, and I'm not ashamed to say that I'm 40. I'm very proud because it's just <laughs> the beginning of another 10 years. I'm so honored to not only have had um, the wonderful opportunity to be a mom and a wife, and then now with this career. So, you know, for all of those who are working through and and figuring out, like, is this where I'm going to be or professionally where it is? Sometimes it just falls into place. And sometimes looking at this moment now and looking at all those moments in my life to see the constellation that has become this, it's, it's chicken skin. It's pinch myself. I can't believe I'm here, but I'm so grateful. And it's because of all of that, that work and that grind and the support of my family and my willingness to learn and the support and the mentors that I've had. I'm just incredibly grateful for everyone who's ever believed in me. And I'm grateful for the ability to believe in myself. And to just work every day for to better not only myself, but my community and my family, because with all those efforts, good things come. And sometimes you don't see it until a moment like this happens. But for everyone out there, please, please, please continue to do good things and to have great intent and just to love on your family and your friends and your community the way that you do, because you are the difference that our Hawaii needs. Oh, I love how your energy just resonates. It's uh, I, I am amazed and again, humbled by it. Is there anything else that you would like to add before we wrap up? No, I'm just so grateful for Think Tech. Thank you guys so much for this opportunity. Um, and this is my first virtual type uh, audition. So I'm going to look back 10 years and be like, oh my gosh, you didn't even know what you were saying and you were just all over the place. But like I said, giving myself the grace to grow and to have wonderful opportunities like this, I, I am forever grateful. And our organization is, is also grateful for this opportunity to share a mission right here in this, this baby stage. So thank you so much for everybody who's listening. We would love, love, love to connect you. And please, please join us and help us grow to where we need to be. Wonderful. And if we do look back on this 10 years from now, I just want to say that I am humbled that Think Tech and Connecting Hawaii Business is your first, you know, show interview. And yeah, I just wanted to point that out there for future us. Um, if people would like to learn more about Honolulu Habitat, where do they go on the web? You're going to visit us on our website, www.honoluluhabitat.org. When you come to our website, please sign up for our newsletter. You get a monthly newsletter with where we're at, what we're doing, so you can always get engaged. 
follow us on social media handles um, so that you can see the impact that we're doing. And I hope that encourages you and revitalizes you to join us in any way you can. We would love to have you at our build site, here at our offices, whatever it is that fits. Thank you so much, TJ, for having us, uh, for, for being on our show today. So for the viewers out there, we just talked to TJ Joseph, Chief Executive Officer of Honolulu Habitat for Humanity. We'd also like to thank Think Tech Hawaii for producing shows such like this. Thanks to Jay Fidel and the entire staff. We had Eric and Haley who were helping us out today. Until next time, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.